Welcome to Titty Tattles. This is Sydney and Phoebe joining you from Taipei and London. So in this first episode, we just want to give you a general idea of what this show is about and give you a chance to get to know us a bit more. Sydney, take it away. Okay. Hi guys. Um, I'm Sydney. I'm a locally bred Taiwanese sweet potato, which in my country means that I grew up here, speak the language, and I'm very proud of my culture. Woo! Also, sweet potato fries are yeah, sweet potato fries are the bomb. Especially, I don't know if you've tried this yet, but if you sprinkle them, because、uh, Phoebe stayed in Taiwan for like undergrad, so <laughs>、yeah. you, you've tried these, right? The sweet potato fries. Of course. How can you be in Taiwan <laughs> for four years and not know the beauty of sweet potato fries? I- I don't know because I feel like the starchy sweetness doesn't necessarily appeal to everybody. But anyways,、Crazy. my point being, sprinkle them with sour plum powder, and it is divine. <laughs> yeah, not a food、right. show, people, but know about this. <laughs> It's important knowledge. <laughs> yes. So I know that my accent doesn't sound convincing at all when I say I'm locally bred. Um, Taiwanese sweet potato, but take my word for it and just give it a few more minutes. You'll see the Asian in me, especially the language slips, the accent <laughs> mispronunciations, whatever.、Um, I'm currently a grad school student with a focus in English literature, and I'm also a full time ESL instructor when I'm not forced to enjoy Le Conte, Deleuze, and Foucault. Wait, who? <laughs> Oh、my God, I'm like offending so many、um, literally intellectuals right now.、Uh, okay, so who are Le Conte, Deleuze, and Foucault, and many other people?、Uh, basically, these are, in my very humble opinion, sad, anxious ca- scholars、um, that you are forced to familiarize yourself with if you want to seem normal or cool <laughs> in the literature department. <laughs> I have never heard of these guys, and I did undergrad in, ling- in literature with you、mm. at the same university. I thought it was just about <laughs> Shakespeare and Milton and Byron. Well, to be fair, you decided to become a responsible adult and left me with the acid and Shakespeare and the weirdos. Yeah, I guess、myself. these are more <laughs> advanced level scholars, whereas I got out. No, well, y- yes, and I don't know. Each do one's own opinion. I'm not sure how advanced they have to be. They're just not my cup of tea. <laughs> sure. Anyways, back to my introduction. <clears throat> Before this turns into a huge. Bashing fest on literary scholars that I do not like.、Um, like many people out there, film and TV have been my escape, and obviously your escape for many reasons. And they have helped pave the way for who I am, who I was hoping to be, and who I hopefully am slowly growing into. That and a lot of PMS breakdowns and、um, shrieking, shrilling heartbreaks. But that is enough about me. <laughs> Let's talk about Phoebe because this little intro I'm doing is getting pretty awkward.、Wow. Okay, take it away. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm Phoebe, and I'm currently working in London in finance. See, Phoebe is the adult in this conversation.、Finance、It feels so、guys. weird to say that because when I was little, I never <laughs> thought I would grow up to be an accountant. Because for one, I was terrible at maths. When I finished my high school education, I jumped for joy for never having to do maths again, and here I am. <laughs> And anyway, I was going to be、for. something much cooler, like Secretary General of the UN or the first female astronaut on Mars. But here I am, a regular office worker, spending my downtime watching TV shows and obsessing over the lives of people on the big screen. Really, it's still something to be very proud of, you know. <laughs> having a job, yay! Yeah, having a job, you know, financial stability,、um, career prospects, not having to worry about how to hone your skills into something creative with a professional. Canon of knowledge on Shakespeare, whichever author you decide to compare <laughs> yourself to,、um, or <laughs> that good stuff. So this podcast came out because Phoebe and I were already spending so much time trading notes on our favorite shows and having stellar insights that would make our literature professors back in university、um, weep tears of joy, either out of、or、frustration、so、or elation. I'm not sure, <laughs> or so we hope. So we thought that we should、uh, maybe immortalize our ideas by recording a podcast and. Making it available for others to enjoy too. Yeah, and our perspectives are shaped by who we are, Asian focused but experienced in Western pop culture. We are English majors who can do character analysis even in our sleep, and we're bilingual and culturally nuanced. So we see points of view that are not always covered in mainstream TV and movie critics. So we are also very different in opinion on a lot of issues, political, moral, and personal. So. That contributes to an entertaining back and forth. This podcast is going to be mostly light-hearted and conversational, as we can. We we could get dark, Phoebe, but you know we'll control ourselves for the audience <laughs> with <laughs> topics drawn from popular. <laughs> 
movies and TV shows. So stay tuned for our upcoming episodes. And meanwhile, we thought it might be fun to do a get to know you session with some party questions. Yes, <laughs> because every time I'm at one of these Zoom meetings, you know, and the host says, everyone say a fun fact about yourself. I die a little inside because when you don't know anything about them, you don't care about Paul, who enjoys hiking, and Jenny, who volunteers <laughs> at an animal shelter, because you don't know anything about them outside that fun fact, and it's just weird. But party questions are always entertaining. Mm. And by party questions, you know, I mean, like, Sydney, I know you have a boyfriend, but mm -hmm. if you were at a bar uh -oh. and a celebrity were to come <laughs> over and hit on you, who would it have to be that uh -huh. you find it really hard to turn them down? Uh, so, so, I can't just turn them down? Okay, uh... Uh, like hard right, to turn, time. turn down because you okay so let me get this because let me get this straight you are asking me who i would emotionally cheat on for five seconds hypothetically well it's just the a thought that exercise I'm not, I'm, I'm not we don't actually know such a great bar that is, all the celebrities we know go there but this is still a serious commitment um i need a drink <laughs> it's a party game where i'm allowed to drink <laughs> yeah and I'm drinking at 11 a.m. And by England. the way, it's nighttime for me, so I'm justifying it. Uh, does it have to be human, though? What? Why are you asking that? <laughs> well, I'm just saying... Is it a like, zombie or a vampire? Human. No, it's, like, a, if it's a fictional character. A, that's fine. It's a, you know, it's a fictional character because then, you know, I'm, I don't know which dog or majestic beast I'd sought out. But, like, anyways, I, just my dog? point is, <laughs> hey, some dogs are hot, you know. I mean, you know, like like Airbud. Airbud's hot, but uh, we're digressing. Uh, my answer would be <laughs> Airbud is hot. So is Tucker on Instagram. Okay, uh, Simba from The Lion King. Your the the celebrity that you can't turn down in a bar is a cartoon lion. <laughs> I'm just imagining <laughs> that if Simba if a cartoon up lion to the bar. with with Simba's Abercrombie and Fitch bangs and that wavy hair it's and that, you know, very because he's a lion. I know, but they're not supposed to look hot because, like, Mufasa clearly looks aged because he has that, that swirl that makes no sense on lions. But, yeah, like, Simba, he's like, he's, it looks like he went surfing, you know, in, like, <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> what were you doing when you were watching The Lion King at the age of five or six? Fantasizing on how majestic that big lion looks and being extremely disappointed that real lions aren't as pretty as the ones in Lion King. I guess that's why I'm the serious. real life Lion King version didn't do as well. Well, I mean, I liked Aslan from Narnia. So you just have a thing for lions. <laughs> I wow. have a thing for big cats. My I did not know this about you. I'm glad we did this. I mean, I don't like house cats. I mean, I don't like house cats because house cats don't like me. They're so cute if they're on like YouTube or something or TikTok. <laughs> but like, if you wanted, if I wanted to feel like genuinely passionate about something, it would be big cats because they're just majestic and sexy. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna take this away now as I'm vaguely disturbed. <laughs> So, for um, me, I, I'm going to stick strictly to the human realm. Yes, because, you know, you left the literature department, you missed all the crazy stuff. Just <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I'm going to speak for a lot of people when I say it's got to be Chris mm. Evans. Who can turn down Captain uh. America? Who can turn down the chance to tap that American ass? <laughs> <laughs> nice one. I mean, I, I like Chris Evans a lot, but I prefer him not as Captain America. Like, he, it only works if he's in the suit. Yeah, but and when he he's talk. in the suit, exactly. When he says Captain America's lines, he's really annoying. But if you just look at that it's face and those abs. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, moving um, on to the question. next question. Um, let me go. Uh, okay. So let's do Kiss, Mary Kill. And I actually asked my boyfriend about this. He said we d we're doing a very PG version because it's. I thought it was like fuck Mary and kill for adults. Yeah, and but we're doing the like we're doing the PG version. version. <laughs> well, you just oh, okay. decided that uh, your celebrity who would attract you would be a cartoon <laughs> lion, so I didn't want to take it that far. Well, hey, we studied Greek mythology. If women were having sex with swans and bulls, <laughs> I'm fine with a lion. At least it looks, you know, like vaguely heterosexual. I mean, come on, a swan. <laughs> I don't know how that works, and I'm not gonna go there. Okay. <laughs> so kiss Mary okay, Kill. Okay, so um, I'm, I'll come up with three celebrities first, then it'll be your turn to ask me. Sure. Okay. So Phoebe, kiss Mary or kill Lady Gaga, Billie Eilish, or Justin Bieber. Okay. Um, 
Lady Gaga seems like she would be a really good kisser, but I'm not sure if she's the marrying type, so I would kiss her. And um, Billy seems like a nice girl. I, I've seen an interview with her. She seems quite chilled. I I could hang out with her. A bit young for you. <laughs> How old is she? Like she's a little bit young. Nineteen. She's like I think I don't even think she's twenty. Yeah. Um, could work out. <laughs> Lady Gaga and Justin okay. Bieber are too old for me. And also Justin Bieber. Justin really. Bieber's too old for you. Justin Bieber's my age. Oh yeah. Fun is fact: he? Justin Bieber and I were born on the same year, same date. Really. I guess he's been famous for so long, I feel like he's like probably (laughs) old because all of the hotties that I looked up to when I was in my high school years were like Johnny Depp and Brad Pitt and Uh, they were way too old for me. All right, you made your case. Your turn. Your turn. Um, Okay, I'm going to stick to my Marvel theme. Scarlett Johansson, (laughs) Robert Downey Jr., Mark Ruffalo. Mm -hmm. Okay, Um, this shouldn't be too hard. Uh, I would definitely marry Scarlett Johansson I would because too. she seems like the most interesting person of the bunch and she's hot and you're marrying her. That means you get to kiss her she all the time. Great. So that would be bad. Mm. Um, RDJ would probably be the one I kiss because as much as I enjoy the Hulk and Mark Ruffalo as a person, um, I'm just not sexually attracted to yeah, him. Yeah, so he's not very sexual like, for me either. And I feel like if I did kill off RDJ, like I would get a lot of hate from his fans. I feel Definitely. like he has a cult he's gone than through Marvel. enough of that. No more killing off <laughs> RDJ. Start a campaign. <laughs> it's just not allowed in any further movies or real life. You'll just have to be immortal. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, what is your favorite drink and what kind of person would that drink be? Well, I'm currently enjoying a gin and tonic at 11 a.m., so I would say that's probably my favorite drink right now. And what mm-hmm. would a gin and tonic be as a person? It's a very British drink, so I'm imagining a middle-aged <laughs> British lady with big boobs in her 40s, mm. dyed blonde hair. Wow, that's very... I don't know if that's a good thing. Like, what, like is it, So is a gin and tonic supposed to be like stereotypically smart or hot or... Well, gin and tonic is like the go-to English lady drink that girls order yeah. in bars. And it's also slightly posh because the younger ladies, you would think of like ah. a cosmopolitan or something. So a cosmopolitan is not considered posh? Um, It's more young, I think. Gin and tonic gives me oh. a more middle-aged feel with dyed mm, blonde hair and cozy honey or sugar. How about you? Um, well, I'm a, I'm a whiskey girl, so whiskey on rocks. Um, and it reminds me of a well-aged man who knows when to shut the fuck up. That makes total sense. But when he <laughs> does speak, he has that husky voice, you know, because he drank so much and, whiskey. Yeah, and there's like this like buttery drawl that's like just subtly there that makes you want a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Of course, it would be this question okay. that gets even more sexual than the one about the celebrity, which turned out to be about cartoon lines. <laughs> alcohol is always sexy if you do it responsibly and you have taste, right? Yeah, sure. People always do mm. that. Mm. Next, um, mm. what is a fashion trend okay. you're not on board with? Um, clothes, bags, or accessories, accessories with brand names plastered all over it. Oh, yeah. um, and I don't mean like it has to be a name brand. Like it can go from even Abercrombie and Fitch and or Supreme. Supreme's like so overrated. Um, and even Chanel. Like I like Chanel. I like Burberry. I love Dior. They have these really nice things that do really well. But I don't enjoy the aspect of having to flaunt the logos. I don't see the point. Yeah. And the ones with just a logo slapped on it turns out usually to be the cheapest one in the brand. So people are just buying it for the brand appeal. Yeah, and Supreme, like, I don't understand. What club am I in if I have a sticker that says Supreme on my t-shirt? I don't get that either. Whether it's an authentic one or not. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like fashion, like, if your style is Chanel or Supreme or Gucci, whatever, it's fine. But I feel like it should be more about and like I, I know that this is like a gray area. I just personally don't enjoy the brand name thing. But because for me, I feel like it's not about the brand. It's about finding the right clothes that complement you and show who you are. But if there are people who believe that, you know, having these brands brands pop out 
on your clothes or accessory is part of their personality, then I completely respect them. I just personally don't enjoy that style. <laughs> That's very diplomatic of you. <laughs> Trying really hard not to alienate any audience. <laughs> <laughs> Watch our show, people. We don't care if you have yeah. icons plastered all over your clothes. You do you. All right, how about you? Um, I think for me, Kardashian style makeup, it just doesn't mm. work for me. For some people, they mm. have the bone structure and it makes their looks really pop. But with mm. my Asian bone structure, it just doesn't work at all. I've tried. It looks so weird. I think you need to adjust it because like their style makeup, like they also selectively choose where to contour, where to highlight to accentuate like their like, um, what's that called? See, the Asian part. Like, you know my Chinese is, like, rushing in my brain. Yeah, no, no, not the cheekbones. It's, like, um, it accentuates whatever positive attributes there are to your physical appeal. Why did it take so long for me to get to that? <laughs> whatever looks good for you, you need... There's al- You always have to tweak a certain style of the yeah, makeup. Yeah, that's the work. problem with watching, watching makeup bloggers because I'm like, okay, that looks great. I got all the notes down and then I do the exact same thing and I'm like, what is wrong with my face? I know, I because I didn't learn how to do makeup from Asian um, YouTubers because at that when, when I needed to learn how to do makeup at that time, the more popular ones were Western. Sure, yeah. And then it took a while for um, Taiwan to get, like, YouTube all popular and stuff. Yeah. Um, and so when I was learning everything, it was from, like, these makeup artists that were, like, you know, they were doing stuff for Vogue, for Cosmopolitan. And their models were mostly white women. And they had a very different bone structure. And it was confusing because I was like, I'm doing this to my eyes, but it just looks like <laughs> someone punched me. Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> It makes me look really old and scary. We had a friend that was um, Caucasian and she was from America. And remember, I know we both know her. And we were doing Halloween together at the English Corner, which we both, you know, dabbed in here and there mm-hmm. at the university. And when I did her makeup and I had this moment of epiphany. And I was like, oh, how? Oh, that's how it's sense. supposed to work. That's what's supposed to look like. And what am I natural? <laughs> Doesn't work in my face, though. <laughs> but you figured it out. Your makeup usually looks really good. Thank you. I've had a lot of horrifying looks and finally found one that works. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to the next, okay, next question. question. Um, what mm-hmm. is your dream fictional profession? You know, like a, a witch or an MI6 I- agent? Um, I want to be a mutant, but specifically I want to be working for Prof- Professor X as an X- X-Man. Oh. And I want Jean Grey's powers. Which are? Uh... It should be telekinetic and telepathic. Telekinetic is when you can move things with your mind, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems really cool. Uh, That's like the most important things. First of all, you don't need to move, and you can also listen to what other people are saying if you can. Yeah, talk well, actually, it isn't like now I think about it. Sometimes I wish I had that power when I'm lying on my bed, being really lazy, and I just want something to move <laughs> to me, like my phone or my glasses. <laughs> this is why I'm not a superhero because that's what I would use it for. I mean, think of all the people you could secretly save with telekinetic powers. Like, see, Wonder Woman has to smash in a shopping mall with that pretty lasso of hers, you know, and then she has to like ruin all the cameras. You know, to keep her identity yeah. hidden. But Jean Grey just needs to sit there with sunglasses and just chill. Yeah, someone could walk <laughs> into a bank to rob it and you could just be there, you know, kneeling on the floor, pretending to be chill and just sneakily take his gun from him. Nobody would know. Yeah. He would be so confused. Oh, that does sound man. brilliant. And how about you? How about you? <laughs> oh, I, I want to be like Doctor Who. You know, I want to have the TARDIS and travel mm. through space and time and fight evil and meet aliens. That would be amazing. So why Doctor Who and not Doctor Strange, given that they're both kind of British actors that portray them? Well, I know they're different in the different universes. Yeah. Um, first of all, I can't pull off the cloak. I feel like only Benedict Cumberbatch can pull off the cloak. Only his neck would be able to like harness that cloak so well and complement it. Yeah, and also I that don't want a cloak like... that thinks for itself because it would judge me. <laughs> But you would ha- you would always have an intellectual companion. Yeah. You know, you could be no. lonely in the desert and your cloak would be your trusty, like, you know. No, my best cloak buddy. would be like, you idiot, you got us into this. <laughs> the cloak seems like a very sassy sort of cloak. But I think it's Doctor Who has such a rich backstory, whereas Doctor Who uh. is more of a like supporting character in the Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah, Doctor Strange. Well, that's because they haven't gotten to his 
character arc yet. <laughs> they have to, you know, kill a Tony Stark first to work on the other characters. Oh, man. <laughs> Pain yeah, again. Uh, but I was a lot, like, I was, I, I felt worse when um, Black Widow died. Really? I didn't really that was worse get for that me. part. Because she died very anticlimactically. I know, but still, like, why did she have to die? She never gave up. Like, what? Why does the rest of them get to live? They all they were all assholes during this whole time. I wish they killed <laughs> off Captain America instead of Black Widow and Iron Man. He was kind of out of his time anyway. Like, it's about it's time. Just the person Captain... who wants to tap his ass. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can admit his appeal and also feel that he's a very annoying character <laughs> fair enough fair enough all right um that was fun the drinks did help <laughs> yeah definitely so yeah. is that all our questions have we reached i think so conclusion? yeah what was our conclusion were people supposed to know us better or find out that we're freaks inside <laughs> i think they've <laughs> achieved both that's that and um i think our next episode is going to be quite interesting we've worked quite long on that that one was very it took a while to plan. Um, it's about Gilmore Girls, and it's gonna be up soon once this episode airs. And we hope you like it. Yay! Stay tuned. Bye.